Let me show you all the different ways that you can transform images in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, when we talk about transforming an image, we're talking about resizing, moving, rotating, skewing, and even warping. Basically anything that you do that alters the appearance of your image on the screen. But just so you know that in order to do any of that, you need to be selected on the layer that you want to transform. So for me, it's not background, it's the banana layer because that's the image that I want to mess with. And there's actually four different ways that you can access these transformations. The first one is to go up to edit and down to free transform right here or to this transform drop down menu here, which we're going to come back to later in the tutorial. So if I click on free transform, you can see these little boxes show up and a blue line around the perimeter of the image. Plus this panel with all the adjustment options shows up as well. Another way is to go command or control T that'll bring up the exact same stuff here. A third way is to just click show transform controls. If I click on that, it's going to show up here, but you can see no panel up top. But as soon as I click on the image anywhere, you can see the panel will show up right away again. And then right here under my properties, you also get some of those kind of panel options right there when you're selected on your layer. But before we really get into it, I just want to explain why it's super important to convert your raster images like this one into smart objects like this one before you transform anything, even though I didn't for this tutorial. So to do that, I'm just going to quickly hide the smart object and I'm going to resize the raster image. So command or control T and I'm just going to type in up here 10% and then I'm going to commit to that transformation. So check. Now, if I go back into that one, so command or control T to go back into free transform, you're going to see that it's actually now at 100% again. It's not, it didn't remember that 10% because essentially for a raster image, when you resize it, it rewrites the pixels of that image. So it's now this size with way less pixels. So now to get it to be full size again, I'd have to go times 10 on this. So go to 1000. You can see that as soon as I commit to that transformation, you can see there's a lot of image quality lost. If I do the exact same thing to the smart object, so I click on this one, command and control T, we type in 10%. It scales to that same size. We click check to commit. And then I go back in command and control T. You're going to see that it remembered that it's 10%. That's because even though it rewrites the pixels to be this size, it remembers the original pixels all the way up to 100% as well. So if I now type in 100% to go back to the original and just place it where it was and click check, it remember those pixels so it keeps the same quality. You can see no quality difference between the smart object that I scaled down and back up and the original background image here. And by the way, if you want to convert a smart object to a raster image, just right click and go to rasterize layer and vice versa. If you want to change a raster image into a smart object, just right click on it and go convert to smart object. Okay. So now we're going to go over all the different types of transformations we can make one transformation at a time. So I'm going to go command or control T that'll bring us into the free transform tool with the panel up here with all these numbers. And we're just going to go through kind of one section at a time so we know all the different possibilities starting with this x and y axis right here so now you'll see if i click and slide to the right the x axis is going to change getting bigger as i move it to the right and smaller as i move it to the left if i move up the y axis is going to get smaller and if i move it down it's going to get bigger next we have the width and the height so this is where you change the size of your image and if you notice it's represented as a percentage so if i click in the corner and slide this down you can see that that's what makes it smaller and i can expand it out to make it bigger so the percentage is higher as i expand it and if i shrink it down you can see the percentages drop note that they change at the same rate so this one's 50 percent and 50 percent they're always going to be the same as long as this chain thing is clicked so if i move this down and uncheck it you can see now I can squish, you know, stretch, do whatever to my image and kind of destroy the aspect ratio. Now you can see these numbers are different. One's at 102%, one's at 56%. If you want to fix that, all you have to do is click the chain back on and then highlight in one of the sides, either width or height and type in a number. And then they'll both adjust to be the exact same number. And just so you know that that's how you can change any of these things as well. So not only can you expand it and adjust it right on the image right here, but you can also type in these boxes and you can even click on the parameter thing. So either the X, the Y, the W, the H, whatever, if you click on it 
and slide it to the right, that parameter is gonna increase. And if you slide it to the left, it's gonna decrease. So in this case, right makes the image bigger, left makes it smaller. If it was X over here, this would move it right and left. This would be up and down. Moving down a little bit right here, we have rotation. So again, you can click in here and type in a number to rotate. So positive numbers will rotate to the right and negative numbers will rotate to the left. Again, you can also click on this and rotate it that way. That's for like fine tuning adjustments. It doesn't move very far. And you can even hover around the corner, like just outside the corner of the image, click and rotate it that way as well. These two right here are to skew your image. I don't really use these, but if we click on this and slide, you can see this skews it left and right. This one skews it up and down. Which brings us to the last two things we need to know about in this panel, which are these two things right here. Besides this, which we're gonna deal with in a second. So these two, this one just means that we're gonna reset, like cancel our transformation. So you can either hit escape or click on this and that'll reset it to the original image or the previous transformation. And then this one is to apply the transformation. So commit to it. You can also hit enter on your keyboard. So when you click that, the box will go away, the panel will go away and we're back to just our image. Now that we've gone over everything we need to know for free transform, let's go back up to edit and down to regular transform and explore these other options that are in here, starting with transform again or shift control T. So if I click that, you're gonna see that it's gonna apply the exact same transformation that we did the first time. So we started at 100% and went down to about 70% and rotated a little bit. Now this one is gonna be 70% of that one and rotated another you know, five or six degrees, whatever we had. Notice that it's not making a copy or anything, it's just recommitting that exact same transformation. So if I hold Control, Shift, and hit T again, it's gonna apply it again and again and again, shrinking it 70% and rotating it five or six degrees each and every time. But did you know that you can also go Shift, Control, Alt, T, and that'll apply that exact same transformation, but this time, if you notice over here, as a copy. So if I do that one again and again and again, it's applying those same transformations, but now we're creating like a cool effect because we have seven copies of it now instead of just one that was repeating it on the same layer. Next, if we go back into transform, we have the original three, so scale, rotate, and skew. We're just gonna skip those ones and go to distort. And it does exactly what it sounds like. Now when you click this, any one of these boxes, you can stretch out your image one piece at a time. So you can kind of make it so it looks like it's bendy, squash it down, stretch it out. This is a, a cool way to just kind of manipulate your image to make it look like it's kind of on the side like that, like it's maybe on a billboard or you know something like that. Just under distort is perspective, which is very similar to distort, except now whenever you click on one of these boxes and move it, it's counterpoint, so this one over here, will mirror the action in the opposite direction. So if I click this one and slide it out to the left, you can see that the right one, the opposite one, was moving out to the right. If I click this bottom one and slide it up, the top one in the right was moving down at the same rate, coming closer to this thing right here. If you click on any of the lines, so not the corners, you can also skew your image like this as well. Now, before we talk about warp, which will be our last one, I'm gonna quickly go down here and talk about these, I'll call them preset ones as well. So rotate 180, that'll you know flip it around 180. You can also rotate 90 degrees clockwise, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, flip horizontal, which will just flip it sideways like this from the left will become the right, the right will become the left. And we also have flip vertical, which is obviously gonna flip it top to bottom and bottom to top. Last but not least, we have warp. So I'm gonna click on that. You're probably not gonna see this. You're probably gonna see something like this, like this default set. And I'm just gonna go through kind of each of these sections, similar to how we did at the start, one at a time, so you can see all the different kind of possibilities here. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is explain kind of the basics of warp. So wherever you click on your image, if you click and then slide your mouse, you're gonna warp that section of the image more than anywhere else. So I clicked on the top left, so this area is being warped more than the bottom right. These little handles also allow you to enhance the warp by bending the warp out or bending the warp in. Now, what if there's a part of your image that you wanna protect, like you don't want it to warp, 
while you're warping another part of the image. Well, that's where this split section comes in. So I'm gonna hover over this one. This would be to split the warp horizontally. So you click on that and you slide this line down to where you want it to split. So maybe I want it to be right there. And then now, not in the middle here, like if I click here and move this, it's actually gonna keep that part of the image nice and you know perfect where it's warping the bottom in this case. So I can stretch out the bottom like that, but it's gonna keep this part good. So I'm just gonna undo that for a second. It's more so if you wanna warp up here, you have to do it in the corners. So if I click here and I warp stuff up here, you can see the bottom is being protected. If I twist this, twist it up, the bottom is being protected there. Now you might go here and have to go to like five by five grid, which I'm gonna talk about in a second to create more spots on the image, go back to the split, apply the split in the same spot. So I'm gonna put it about right there. Now you have more areas that you can mess around with where as before we were just in the corners. Now as you're warping and twisting and doing everything to this image, the bottom is still being protected or is at least separate from the top. We can still warp this area as well without affecting the top and vice versa. So since we just talked about it, let's go over what grid is as well. Like right now, this is just the default view, but if you go into grid, you can change it to actual three by three, which will give us these extra dots and grid points. I'm gonna go to five by five, so you can see the one that we just dealt with, all these options. Again, if you click in the middle anywhere of any of these dotted sections, it'll move the whole section together and warp everything around it. If you click on a dot and move it, that's gonna be a more you know, fine-tuned, precise warping spot. And then the handles are to twist and turn your warp. The final thing we're gonna talk about in warp is actually this little drop-down right here. If you click on that, you're actually gonna recognize these probably from like PowerPoint. I think these were like the cool way to make your text all awesome in PowerPoint. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you this thing over here. So when I click on this, you're gonna see that brings us back into the original panel of free transform. And if I hover over it, you can see this is a quick way to switch between free transform and warp modes. So if I click back on it, now we're back into warp, free transform, warp. So let's go back here now to warp and see what these things do. These are really just presets that allow you to quickly mess with your image and make it look like one of these things. So if I click on arc, for example, you'll automatically get this arc at bend 50, whatever. But if you click on the box here, you can change the bend to negative and change the look of your image and warp it however you want. So let's just take a look at another one. Let's say bulge. As you click on this, you can change how the image bulges and maybe like this would kind of look good on like a, like a water bottle or something like that. And just so you know that this right here changes the direction. So this was kind of up and down and bending it left and right. If I click this, it's gonna change the bend. So now it's gonna allow me to slide left and right, but the bend is happening curving up and down, like curving this way instead of the original one, which was curving this way. And then these two things right here, again, this is for horizontal and vertical. If you click and slide, that's just gonna tweak it and bend it one way or the other, like left and right. This is gonna tweak it bend it up and down to change how it looks. To learn more about Photoshop Essentials, make sure to watch one of the videos linked on the screen right now.